everyone, and welcome to New Consciousness Review. I'm Miriam Knight, and our guest today is Mark Allen. Mark is an internationally renowned author, entrepreneur, and composer even, and the founder, the co-founder of New World Library, which he co-founded in 1977 with Shakti Gawain. Um, he holds seminars all over California, and he has written some of the most fascinating books about the intersection of business and visioning. Um, some of the books include The Greatest Secret of All, The Millionaire Course, Visionary Business, and today we're going to talk about his latest book, The Magical Path, Creating the Life of Your Dreams and a World that Works for All. So, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a delight to have you with us. Thank you, Miriam. It's a delight to be on New Consciousness Review. It thank sounds you. great to me. Well, it's been a few years since we last spoke, and when I saw your book in our mailbag, I knew that I had to interview you about it, because maybe it's the Peter Pan in me who wants to believe in magic, yes. but you call your book A Course in Magic. Yes. So what kind of magic are we talking about? You know, I, I take care at the beginning to say uh, this is a very practical, direct path to creating what you want in life, and you can call it what you will. I basically looked over my life in a new light. The older I get, the simpler I see things. I struggled and was a total poverty case and had a lot of anxiety in my 20s into my early 30s. And then between 30 and 35, I turned it all around. I was a different person at 35 than I was at 30. I, I had a different consciousness, in fact. So I love New Consciousness Review. I was in a different state of mind, and my whole world reflected that. I went from total poverty to real abundance, abundance I wouldn't have even dared dream about at age 30. So what and was the so catalyst? That's it. I looked back and I said, what was the catalyst? And I realized, oh, it was all about changing my mind, changing my thought. And I did some real simple things that did it, very simple things. I am not disciplined. I've never been disciplined. I got kicked out of a Zen center for not being disciplined enough. I, I'm lazy. So the little things I do don't require any kind of discipline of doing every day or I, I look back, okay, what changed my life? And I realized you could call it magic. I called it magic. I found a book at age 21 that was all about magic. And that's when I started doing these little meditations, healing practices and things. And so I, I called it magic. But I carefully say in the book, you can call it anything you want. But a lot of people have negative connotations about magic and think, oh, there's a dark side and da 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 and I don't even go there at all, but I say, call it what you will. Find your own words for it, in fact. In fact, with every exercise, I encourage every person to take, take it and take the idea and change something in it, change the words, make it your own. But I do a series of little exercises that I started in my 20s that when I look back, they've had powerful results in changing my life. So I call it magic. I've loved magic as a kid. You know, I liked your intro when you said maybe it's the Peter Pan in you, but you've always wanted to believe in magic. I loved Peter Pan as a kid. <clears throat> I had a Peter Pan costume my mom made. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I loved the idea of magic. And, and, uh, but some people don't, and that's fine. Use whatever words you will. It all works, I say. Magic works. Creative visualization works. Positive thinking works. You can call it strategic planning. If you have a business mind, strategic planning works, and it's the same thing. It all works. The pr problem is negative thinking also works. Mm -hmm. Every thought we think does have power. So when we, when we dare to dream, and the first thing I do is encourage people to dare to imagine. Five years have passed, and everything has gone as well as they can imagine. What would their life look like? That's what I did the day I turned 30. That's what changed my life. Daring to dream. When you dare to dream, your mind 
is when it's going to a place in imagination, is creating that place and putting a, uh, it has a power, a creative power. That's the magic or the creative visualization. We'll never understand how it works. The process of creation will ever be a mystery. How anything is created is a great mystery, but we can set it in motion. We don't need to understand it. I don't understand it, but I set it in motion in my life. We can set it in motion very easily. We dare to dream. Those thoughts have power. All our positive thoughts have power. When we affirm, I am now creating the life of my dreams in an easy and relaxed manner, in a healthy and positive way, which is what I recommend, that has power. Your subconscious grabs hold of it and starts moving toward it. The problem is negative thinking also has power to undo the positive stuff. So literally when we say, okay, I want to be successful doing what I love. I am now creating the life of my dreams. The whole universe in some mysterious way says yes and shows us the next step to take. But then if our next thought is, oh, but it's so hard to succeed. So few people succeed. The whole universe says, yes, it's hard to succeed for you with that thought. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's really suspending our disbelief yes it's getting the inside right all the important work i've done when i've looked back on it is internal the external work is just simple and obvious once you get the internal mm -hmm. eckhart tolle said it beautifully in the power of now he said get the inside right and the outside will fall into place yeah. when i look back that's exactly what happened i went to a different level of consciousness. I went from at 30 thinking I was a fool with money. I didn't understand business. I didn't know what's going on in the world to thinking money is easy and easy to understand and it comes to me abundantly. And I changed my thinking about money. And then the steps to take became very simple and clear. Oh, start a company. How do you do that? Oh, well, it's easy. You go down to the local civic center and then start creating a product. Okay. And the steps out there in the world become very simple and obvious once you get the inside right and, and find an effective way to deal with the doubts and fears that naturally arise when you dare to dream something big and expansive for yourself. Well, that's the whole point of your book. It's these techniques for... Um, having this change in thinking percolate all the way down into your cells and your bones. Yes. Yes, it's getting these messages to your subconscious mind. I, I have a, an image, and I don't, even, I don't care about the, the physics of it, the science of it, how it actually works. I just want it to work in my life. And I do know, when I was 15, I saw Hamlet. And I remember vividly hearing Hamlet say to Horatio, there is far more in heaven and earth, Horatio, than is dreamt of in your philosophy. And I remember thinking, yes. And it made me feel um, like we'll never understand. And people that think they know exactly how the world works are wrong, because there's far more in heaven and earth than any of us understand. So... We'll never understand how it works, but we can work with the tools, and they are very simple little tools. Daring to dream is the first one. Asking your powerful subconscious mind the next steps to take. It all is a matter of getting our subconscious mind to agree with our dream and to go for it. It's rather ironic that the publisher of New World Library is saying that we will never understand how the world works because all of the books that you have been putting out there for the last umpteen years have been trying to fill in this mosaic of understanding. Yes, but they all touch on the great mystery of it all. And every, everybody knows who's really honest you know, including Einstein, including all the, the great thinkers of, of our history, they know you'll never understand fully. As Einstein said, he wanted to understand the mind of God. You know, 
And he said, the rest is unimportant. Well, the mind of God is obviously vast and eternal and omnipotent and omnipresent and omniscient, as three big words we learned as kids, you know, all-knowing, all-present, and all-powerful. We will never fully understand the minds of God, the mind of God. There will always be a tremendous mystery. Mm -hmm. But that's what makes life really exciting and wonderful.